Here is a way to pre-process CSS with JavaScript. I'm using Node, and I'm going to pull in the file system and glob modules. I'm going to define three functions, one to load files, one to process loaded files into processed files, and one to output those if we need to. So for the load function, we're going to give it a path, something like a specific CSS file, or all of the CSS files in a folder, or in multiple folders and we are going to uh, load those file names and then for each file name we're going to read the content of the file and that gets returned in an array because of our map. So then we can take the style sheet array and we can pass it to the process function and that takes for each style sheet string that's in the array it's going to create a new function. The arguments are going to be the plugins that we give to it if we choose to give some functions and those will get passed here, and we can give them to our process function as an object. And then it's going to evaluate the style sheet as a JS template string. So this would let us use JavaScript interpolation anywhere inside our CSS file sheet, but we can still open and edit our CSS file as though it's just like a regular CSS file. But anywhere that we put those uh, special brackets, we're using JavaScript. And then optionally, if we're not gonna do anything in JavaScript with the interpolated style sheets, we can also use Node to write the file out to a file name. So we can give the array of style sheets that have been evaluated plus a file name, and it's going to write that out. So here I have a couple of examples. So here we're going to import the library. We're going to import this variables.css file. We're going to define an object called variables, and I'm defining two variables here, two different colors. Now, the end result, we're not going to output to a file. We're going to log this to the console so we can see it, but we are going to process the loaded file here, and to pass in uh, those plugins that I was talking about, we can pass in the variables. So we're going to spread the variables in here, so it's going to give it brand red and brand blue. And uh, there's only going to be the one style sheet and the one string, but it's still going to end up as an array after this process step. So to print it nicely for the console, I'm just going to join that. So let's run this and see what it does. We should see, um, here's our CSS style sheet. So you can see that we've just interpolated brand red and brand blue here. And if we run this, we should see an equivalent style sheet, but with brand red and brand blue interpolated in. So here we have those two colors. So that's one way to do preprocessor variables using just straight up CSS and JavaScript. Another thing that you can do here is a function. So this one isn't going to be a runtime function, that's going to be a compile time function. So when you render this style sheet, it's going to pick randomly either lime or hot pink. So here we are, custom function.css. Um, I'm just going to set two different properties. They're both going to be to this custom thing. So each one is kind of like flipping a coin. It could be lime or it could be hot pink each time that we uh, run this. So let's see if that happens. If we run it a few times, we should see a variety of colors letting us know that it's actually running this function each time it's evaluating it. So we want to read this on node. So we've got lime and hot pink, hot pink and hot pink, hot pink and lime, and lime and lime. So that's pretty even. The next thing is writing a function that actually pastes in quite a bit of code. This is kind of like templating or like a mixin. So we've pulled in our library, we're loading mixin templating.css, and the only thing in this style sheet is just one call to that function. We're giving it a selector called wrapper, we're giving it a width and a height, and that's it. And so in this function, responsive embed, the selector, there's a default in case we didn't supply one. Um, width is a default and height is a default. But what we've given in as arguments get interpolated into this string and that gets returned. So by the time we log this, uh, we're going to process the file. The file is mix in templating. Uh, when we see that, we should end up with this but with our values here, the three arguments we passed in, inside our CSS.
So here we are. So we called it wrapper, so it shows up there and there. And then we also have the width and height that we passed in as a variable. So rather than using something like SAS or less or stylus or some other thing where you are learning some kind of a CSS dialect and all of your mix-ins and everything are in some you know other language, you could be writing, you could do all of your CSS pre-processing with just a few lines of JavaScript. And then everything that you write is either 100% CSS or 100% JavaScript, whether you're writing on the inside or outside of these brackets but 100% of your helpers and your functions and everything that you're doing is still a standard language. Hope that was fun. Catch you next time.